You know what time it is. It's 8 a.m., people. It's time to crank up that volume. Welcome to Squawk Box Radio, the place where nothing real happens, and I care what you think about it now. Today in the news, 17 remain dead in a morgue-killing spree. The bra celebrates a pair of historical events today. Police need your help with missing pigs. Say they like to play with straw and sticks. Wolf at large. Scientists claim that bugs flying around with wings are flying bugs. I give up. I'm your host, STD, J, the DJ that will not go away, even if you take medication. Today, our guest is still Travis Clark. Welcome back, Travis. It's good to be here. You're becoming a regular on this show, Travis. I'm sure with everyone listening, your popularity in town is skyrocketing. Nope, I'm still the same Travis. You don't have people running up to you screaming and wanting autographs or wanting to take pictures with you? I keep to myself mostly. I never seek fame. I do what I believe is right. Well, right about now is a good time for a commercial break. Do you ever feel like you're spending too much time looking for the right tool? Have you ever just wanted to buy an animal for no reason whatsoever? Then come on down to Annette's General Store. Annette's General Store is filled with items that you just can't live without, from simple buckets and bags of feed to high-tech gizmos that tell whether or not your eggs are fertile. Annette's General Store. If you have money, you are bound to buy useless items here. Annette is not responsible for any lost animals once purchased. If you are not fast, don't buy them. And we are back, people. In the studio today is, you know it, Travis. So, Travis, where we left off on Friday was that you and Becky just started to be a couple, and you were puked on, flashed Becky your butt, and Jackson was leaving for college. Did I leave anything out? No, I think you got the highlights. So let's continue the tale of Travis and Becky. Later that year, the start of the baseball season, Becky and I have been dating for a couple of months now, and things are going good. She opened up my eyes to see a different world than I saw before. She got me reading poetry, and I was really getting into history. I bet she opened a lot of things up for you, and often. She opened her heart, if that is what you are referring to. I was thinking about something a little lower, but yeah, we'll go with heart. Anyways, it was the start of baseball, and we were at practice. See if you can hit this one, man. You gotta throw a strike first. Here it comes. Chad threw the ball. I could tell it was a curve by the rotation of the ball. I sat back on it and swung, making solid contact and drove the ball over the fence. (laughs) You got lucky. Try it again. You'll know what's coming. Give me your best pitch. That was my best pitch. Come on, you scared? All right, here it comes. I gripped the bat and got ready. The pitch came in. It was inside. I cleared my hips and swung the bat again, sending this one over the fence. Remember when we were young and I used to strike you out? I was trying to make you feel good. Gee, thanks, buddy. Travis, come here. I went over to see what the coach wanted. Travis, I want you to meet Mr. Niles. Nice to meet you, Mr. Niles. Mr. Niles here is a scout for Southern University. He came here to watch Greg play. Well, he's got his eyes on you. Coach. He likes what he's seeing. You keep it up, maybe you could get out of this town, play some ball. I'll try my best. Now go back to practice. Take the field. With that, I put my bat away and grabbed my glove and ran out to center field. I was nervous, excited, but then I remembered what Becky told me. Take three deep breaths and count to ten. I focused in, and Chad was up to bat. You ain't going to get me out. The pitch came in, and Chad hit it deep right center. I tracked the ball and ran in a line to get it. I got to the warning track, felt the wall, and jumped as high as I could. When I came back down, the ball was in my glove. No way, man! How? I threw the ball back in. Chad couldn't believe it. The rest of the practice seemed to go like a blur. I was running, diving, and throwing runners out. It was like I could do nothing wrong. Was Becky there to see you? No. She didn't go to the practice as usually. She was usually doing schoolwork or babysitting my younger brother. Oh, come on. She's a babysitter, too. My fantasies are running wild now. She would only babysit when my parents had to go to town. 
My mom was pregnant and she was seeing the doctor quite often. In fact, last month she was put on bed rest. We finished up with practice and the scout said to me, Kid, I like what you got. I've talked to your coach here. He says you're the best player on the team. I'm going to make some phone calls and let's say we talk to your folks next week about you playing some ball for us. Yes, sir. That would be great. With that, the scout walked away. It was the last time I ever saw him or the baseball field again. Wait, what? I went home and told Becky about the practice. I can't believe it, Travis. I'm so excited for you. You're not going to leave me behind, are you? Becky, we have to graduate high school first. But no, I'm not leaving you. Maybe you can come with me. With that, the phone rang. Hello, Clark residence. Travis, I'm not coming home tonight. They're going to induce labor on your mom. I'm staying here to be with her. Okay, Dad. I love you. There is some money on my dresser. Order some pizza if you want. With that, he hung up. I guess I'm going to be a brother again. Your family's getting big, Travis. One day I'd like a family of my own. One day. Well, you're getting practice babysitting my brothers. I'm sure that being a mother is different, though. I'm sure that you'll make a great mom one day. I kissed her and walked back to the phone and ordered a pizza. Becky stayed as long as she could. She played with Hunter, and once we put Hunter to bed, we curled up on the couch and watched TV. I don't remember what was on, but then the phone rang. Hello, Clark residence. Travis. Your mom... She... Didn't... Make it. She's gone. She's... Dead. Hearing that, I fell to the floor. Travis, what's wrong? Still holding the phone to my face. What about... He's fine. Healthy. Baby boy. His name is Earl. Becky had no idea what was going on. She sat down on the floor next to me and held me tight. She knew something was wrong but didn't know what. What should I do? Take care of Hunter. I'll be home in the morning. With that, he hung up. I stayed there motionless, still holding the phone. Travis? It's... it's my mom. She's dead. Oh, Travis. I'm so sorry. I'm here for you. With that, we both sat on the floor holding each other. Not a word was spoken. We didn't move. We sat there for hours. She never left my side until there was a knock on the door. I got up and answered the door. It was Mrs. Williams. Becky, you're late. A safe farewell and let's go. Mom, Travis's mom just passed. Travis, are you okay? I'll be fine, Mrs. Williams. You can take Becky home. My dad will be back in the morning. Are you sure that you're okay? I'll be fine. Goodbye, Becky. I'll talk to you later. Travis, if you need anything, you make sure to call. Becky, I'll wait for you in the car. With that, Mrs. Williams walked out the door. I stood there with my head down. It'll be all right, Travis. With that, she gave me a hug and kiss on the cheek. She turned around and walked towards the door. When she opened the door, she turned and said, I'll come over tomorrow, okay? We don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. Thank you, Becky. I remember sitting down in a chair and then it was morning. I can't tell you if I slept or not. Later that morning, my dad arrived. Travis, how was everything? Fine, Dad. Did you check on the chickens or pigs yet? Not yet. There is more work to be done. No time to feel sorry. Has Hunter eaten yet? Yeah, I gave him a bowl of cereal. Good. Hey, Dad? Yeah. Never mind. I walked out the door, never telling him about baseball or what Mrs. Williams had said. I fed the chickens and collected the eggs, fed and watered the pigs. As I looked out past the pasture, I tried to remember. Look past the big thing in a way... But I couldn't. All I saw was mom. Travis, I'm touched. 
Your story is filled with so much emotion. Your day was filled with so much joy and then grief. What happened with baseball, though? I knew that Dad would need help. With Jackson off at college and now two little ones at home, I talked to the coach and told him to tell the scout I'm done. And just like that, I never played sports again. Did your dad ever find out about the scout? Never. Damn, Travis. <laughs> you are some type of man. But my producer is telling me that it's time to wrap things up. Is there anything else that the people need to know? It will all be told. Just give it time. I trust you, Travis. Thank you. Well, folks, that's a wrap. Tune in next time for more of this story. And now on to a word from our sponsor and then to... Um, who cares? I'm out of here. Many people ask this age old question. What happens to me when I die? Here at Shady Acres, we take care of your loved ones and your not so loved ones. We make sure that they are given the proper burial and we have lots of burial options available. From fine oak coffins, metal, pine boxes, cardboard, and double line garbage bags. We can give whatever your loved ones desire. <sighs> Located right off the freeway, next to the toxic dump site for easy, quick unloading of your loved ones. Come to Shady Acres for all your disposals or funeral needs. We are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Next time you stop by, try our express options. If you're in a hurry to let your loved ones start their afterlife experience.